So we're uh, beginning at 6.08, the Policy Review Committee uh, meeting. Uh, today is October 28, 2019, and I think we're going to begin with old policy, uh, policy uh, 201, uh, admission of students. I think, I think we just need everyone to kind of look at the red. Is that is that correct? Yeah, the red reds are the changes. Um, it's just tweaking the wording of our current policy, making sure it's in alignment with our practice, um, and also making sure it lines up with um, current regulations, which um, changed in the state a little bit. The wording is can be a little bit confusing because beginners talks about really first grade. Um, that's kind of state code language, um, and, and kindergarten well, obviously, but the. The dates uh, we have corrected when they're punched in there in red. It's pretty self-explanatory. So just take a look through that. If you guys are good with that, can we yep. bring that forward? So you bring it forward to the first reading, and then write first reading on the policy. All right. All right. So we'll do the first reading. Yep. All right. Great. Beth, are you okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, our old policy, policy nine fifteen, booster support organizations. Um, I understand there's some going to be some commentary on this. Do we want to? begin with that or sure yeah. hey guys we we understand there's some concerns about this policy and um, which is why we brought this up under old business to give you guys an opportunity to share with us obviously you guys have been great partners with us and we'd like to hear your viewpoint before we just push it forward okay do you want to go ahead and they, speak? they can speak if you like yeah you can come up there either, either way it's fine there. either way it's fine I mean okay um well, Mr. Hurley is probably the only person who is here back in 2012 when the foundation was resurrected um, from its previous life form, which I think was in the 70s. Um, at that time, the school board contracted out with a gentleman named Bob New to come in and explain how EITC is a way for money to be given to school districts, but not to the school district, but rather to foundations. And it's a tax benefit for companies um, in Pennsylvania. When he was uh, presenting to the school board back at that time, he made it abundantly clear the foundation must be separate from the school district. One of the things that adding the foundation to your policy and requiring the foundation to submit budgets and reports and things to the school district will blur that line of separation of foundation and school district. Businesses cannot donate directly EITC money to the school district, it could affect the money that the foundation receives that we then, based on parameters that we have to follow with the state and programs that we have submitted that have been accepted into the EITC program, to then turn around and present money to the district in order to support those EITC approved programs, such as I think all the AP classes are involved for supplies with that, the um, teachers in the park, we can use EITC money to help fund, um, fund that program. Our concern is we will start to blur that line and that's a line we can't cross. And it was something that was made abundantly clear by Mr. New when the board and Dr. Otto were working on bringing back the foundation. Um, I know Michelle had reached out to several foundations in the area. Um, she's the executive director to find out how their school districts handle the foundation and their school board. Um, I think the best one was, why did they want that information? Yeah, there's very little report, official reporting between the foundation and the, or required reporting. Of course, everything that the foundations have, um, because of being a 990, uh, 501c3, uh, Nonprofit, yes. This is why I don't speak. <laughs> um, that is actually published online. Um, all that budget information is available. All of our stuff is available. Um, but to actually have to be required by the district is not 
done, at least around here, from the other foundations I've communicated with, Boyertown, Pottstown, Potts Grove, Downingtown, none of them really have any set policy requirements through their schools. They do share information voluntarily. Everything, as we do, is approved by the school. We don't give anything to the district that isn't approved. So back to that kind of blurred line, keeping ourselves separate from the district is kind of important. And something that kind of sets us a little bit apart, I think, from PTC, band, and sports, they will make payments on behalf of the school district for things that are being purchased for their various groups. The Blazer Foundation does not write a check to anybody but Daniel Boone School District. If we're paying some, giving money for a program, it comes through the school district. We give you the money, you then pay for it. Um, so at any time, the school board can say, no, we can't accept this money for whatever reason, um, but we don't pay for things without the, it going through your channels, if that makes sense. It does. Um, the, um, a lot of the things you said that, um, about the fact that all of your documents are available online, those, those things are true of PTC and sports mm -hmm. and, and music as well. So I guess I wasn't understanding that, um, what the difference was. And I'm glad that you guys came to talk to us about it because I, I had it in my head that there was a difference and I'd been told there was a difference, but nobody really ever explained it to right. me. Um, so to me, I was like, well, I don't understand why it couldn't be treated the same. I'm, I'm hearing what you're saying, that it, that it should be treated differently. Um, and uh, um, But at the same time, if we're going to treat it differently for a reason, it's got to be on record that we know why. Exactly. Especially since none of, us, <laughs> none of us can really articulate right. our, our sense that it should that it, that it had been explained right. before that it, it, that it is different. And I vaguely recall some of this because and I'm glad, I'm I glad. go to school board meetings too many times. And I'm glad, I'm glad so. you, uh, you, you were able to explain it to us because yeah. when, when the question was asked, I didn't, we didn't have a good answer. Right. And remember, seven years ago was a tumultuous time Correct. in this school district. Correct. And there were businesses that would donate to us but did not want to have a relationship with the school district. Right. So it was a way for us to kind of bridge some of that, mm -hmm. and I think it's gotten better. Yeah. with some of those business people that now they're okay, it doesn't just have to be the foundation anymore. Right. I, I, I you know, it, and I don't know if um, Mr. Hurley remembers when we had this conversation, I said I am open to hear why, because <laughs> we, had, we had had that same conversation, like I thought I remembered that there were reasons, but I wasn't on the board back. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Bucky, what do you think? Well, I I mean, this basically was the reason we're even here today. It was proposed by one of our fellow. It was, but pro, um, it was proposed that we take a look at it by um, by a parent, right? And also a board member. It was brought up to that board member in a from a parent. Board parent. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know that actually. And I, I think um, there was concerns around Title IX, which they addressed. They're correct when they addressed. There is some oversight here in regards to the district, um, yeah. just in regards to. Because I think what was referenced in the I board members' email, saying. they like they, to find that we don't want to be in a situation where we're trying to get around Title IX. By we, we wanted funds. to make well, you wanted to make sure there was some oversight in that right. regard. But it, there is, when you really think about the educational foundation, that is a good point. I mean, like there is some oversight in when you are giving some money. Yeah, so it just doesn't come from us; it comes from. Something. Oh, the state requires. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We have to. There's specific reports that our treasurer has to fill out and follow up with all the EITC along with the school board has the right to say no at any time. No, we can't accept this money for whatever reason. Well, I think so I don't know any, why anybody would have to accept money. <laughs> Do we want to vote on this? We can leave it as is and leave the policy as is and we don't move it forward to first reading or we can move it to first reading. It's up to the board. You guys got to make a decision. Okay. So, so. If, if that is the case, then I don't see any. Um, so it was brought to us by, by my, that maybe, we should change uh, the wording um, to, to rigidly define which which groups that we expect those documents from. If if um, if there's a good reason why the Blazer Foundation is left off, then I think we should just leave the leave policy as it, as it is. is. 
what, yeah. do, what do you guys think? Yeah, it's fine. I think, I think I'm fine with that. And we'll just have to um, explain to, you know, and Mike didn't care what the determination was. He just asked us to take He just wanted to bring it up. I didn't realize that. So do we want to, so are we able to, we can't. Just write a note on there, says the policy doesn't go forward. Okay, then we'll update that. Okay. Okay. So the policy is not going to go forward. So it, it won't change. It will stay the same. Okay. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thanks for coming out. We do appreciate it. You only know what you know. I know. And, and, you know, we have a relatively young board. Should not go. Board. Policy stays yeah. the same. It stays the same. It does not go forward. Now, right does not go was forward. Around my secretary won't know that means if you don't. Yeah. And uh, he's the only one. Yeah. So. yeah, and he didn't remember. And he didn't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> there was a lot going on during that time. So right. Right. Yeah, there was, it was pretty, it <laughs> was wild, hey guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that when Ott was here and everybody? Uh, it was wild then. <laughs> it was, we'll just leave it at that. All right. Thank you. All right. Oh, it's. It's it's only warming up here. This is a fun this is a fun committee. You don't want to miss any of these things. This is fun. You want to watch me feel? All right. Have a great day. Okay. All right. So that's done. That's. Where's the one? What's it gonna do? All right. So now we're gonna go into tobacco. Yeah. This will actually be one for discussion. Okay, so now we're going to go into policy. Where is it here? New policy, 222 tobacco nicotine. You said this is. There we go. All right. All right, if you take a look at that policy, guys, um, the policy was updated in 2007, but I think as most of you know, uh, there is a problem nationwide with vaping um, and Daniel Boone like any other school district is having issues with uh, vaping and so this helps us the, the amendments that we're proposing to this policy will help us uh, deal with the vaping epidemic um, from an administrative standpoint. Um, are you gentlemen here for the regular transportation? Transportation. Me, I'll show you where it is. Uh -huh. Oh, you know? No, we don't. Okay, <laughs> Man, that we had more people. So if you turn to the second page of the policy, um, we've, we're proposing two additions to this, and I'll explain um, the, uh, why we're doing that. Uh, vaping is a much more of a problem. This policy was written in regards to uh, primarily tobacco types of things. Um, what this does is it gives us the ability, um, if a student is caught vaping, uh, we can charge them uh, $25 for possession. That's so we can test the vape kits for drugs um, and other illicit substances. Oh, okay. Basically, it's covering the cost um, of that, um, the kits. We have to buy these kits for that, and that's what it is doing. Um, so the policy gives us a permission. And then the second part of that, which I'm proposing, is that the, um, and which we're, I've already put this together, but I wanted to, we got to pass the policy first, um, some admin guidelines, just in terms of how we're going to handle, you know, first vaping incident, second vaping incident, and things like that. And so I put together some guidelines for our principals so that we're consistent in terms of how we're handling that. Um, number one is, is we, you guys got to be comfortable with that, but that's kind of where we're also, you know, we're hoping that's a deterrent also, to be honest yes. with you. And I have, obviously, because it's not a policy, it hasn't happened yet, but what are, what are we currently doing? There, there's a consequence. Um, basically, the kids are getting suspended uh, for doing that. In school, out of school? In school suspension. They still you, be. You find out-of-school suspension tends to be a 
the kids like that better because they're unsupervised at home. Yeah, so in school tends to be our most effective consequence. And you're finding that a lot in high school? Absolutely. Um, it isn't, I know it's yeah, everywhere, yeah. I'm just saying, but we, we are finding it. We absolutely are, yep. Yeah. Like everywhere else, I mean. So yeah, you're gonna, yeah. so you find them in a restroom or something like that, vaping. They would be. Yep. They're summoned up to the office. Yep. And, and we how, get how's the fee? Usually, like kids telling on each other. Yeah, or? a lot of that. Yeah. How's the fee? How do we handle the fee? Um, the basically they would they would have to pay a fee of twenty five dollars if they don't if they don't pay and it goes on their obligations like Can't um, graduate yeah before. things like that. Um, we we want to test the vapes anyway to make sure there's no um, drug types of things. Are we testing now? And not yet. Out? Not yet. We're waiting for, for this particular piece of that. Okay. What do you guys think? I think it sounds fine. Yeah, it sounds good to me. Fee okay? Is that reasonable? Yeah. I mean, given I would, they're, they're, the cost is a little bit less than that, but it's... it's it, a deterrent. Yeah. yeah, it's, you know... Make it there's time and effort. There's time and effort. Like we, we kind of went around yeah, around to. You know, I think that you know the fact that it has to get tested. You know that kind of we're just recovering our costs. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and the aggravating factor. Well, chances are some of them are going to have to go home and have somehow explain that to the parent. Mm -hmm. Or how the parents notified when this happens? Oh yeah, that, and that's part of the AG. I mean, that's the first thing that happens is the parents are called. I mean, we're, we don't return the vape kits. That's also part of the AG I, I put together. Um, like uh, the vape itself, they don't get them back. So they don't get their paraphernalia. No, they don't get that back. <laughs> Just don't use it here. That's kind of expensive, is what I understand too. So I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but that's right here. So okay. You want us to? Can I move that to first? Can we go to first reading on that, guys? Yes. Go to first reading. Okay. Can I keep all this in one? Yeah. Just keep it all right. Uh, okay. So now we're doing. So now we're going to do policy 705, facilities and workplace safety. Gotta go through here and see what changes. We want to go first under uh, what delegation or responsibility? Do you need it? Insurance set we set that up years ago because of our workman's comp insurance and things. Okay. Everything in there is pretty straightforward. Yeah. yeah. Go to first reading. Yeah, I would. Uh, right. That one's pretty. I, easy. I always, I'm always a little concerned when we're like, you know, dictating the creation of another another meeting. So, so, so as long as it's something that already exists, I'm good. <laughs> okay. So the next one is uh, building security. Um, yeah. What's the number? Uh, 709. Okay. Number three. Number three? Yeah. Manage and control? No, unlimited. that title's wrong. That's what it is. Manage and control. It's Director oh. of Facilities and Contracted Services. Oh, 
Yeah, number three. Yeah, number three under unlimited access. What is it, director? Of facilities and contracting services. Our titles are different than the generic one, that's all. So we're changing some of the titles? Yeah. Director of facilities and contracts, yeah, for three. What's the second part of it? Just cross three out and put director here of facilities and contracting services. Okay. Director of Facilities yeah. and Contractor Services. Right. Head is custodian, is that correct? You're fine. still have a head custodian? Yeah, they have a head custodian in each building. They have, it's contracted but head custodian. It's one of ours? It's, it's not one of ours, it's one of the contract. They call them head custodians also, as okay, well as us. Yeah. Same thing with maintenance? Yeah, well, that's fine. Even though interstate, we contract with interstate for that, we, they have four maintenance personnel. Okay. Business is policy 8052 or point two school security personnel. School police officers. There was a lot of changes here. Okay. What's the number on that one? Uh, 805.2. There's a bunch of changes on this one just because the title's primarily here, guys. There's a bunch of changes just because of titles and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Okay, so the under delegation of responsibility where it says uh, the school safety and security coordinator shall report directly to the superintendent and shall be responsible uh, for the following. It should say district security officer who also serves as a school safety and security coordinator. And I'll explain okay. why we have to phrase it that way in a minute. Okay. Um, the, re the title of Greg is District Security Officer. And that had to do with, you can only, by PA code, you can only call people certain titles depending on. And they have certain functions. Yeah, school, and right? certain, yeah, yeah, and it has to do, it's a whole, it's. It has we to actually, do with the way the regulations yeah. are, I understand. And so the, the regs also say we need to have a, a safety and security a coordinator. Yes. And last year we made that Curtis, we just kind of threw that on them because we needed someone to do it and uh but so officially our district security has that function in our school district so basically greg miller's doing what curtis did last year plus a lot more obviously so that's why it's worded that way i know that's too complicated so you have okay. that district security officer who who also serves the school safety and security coordinator. School 
same team. Security, school safety. What's that? Their school safety and security coordinator. Um, it says here that we're supposed to, that, that the uh, we're supposed to coordinate a law enforcement tour biennially. Is that biennially? That's twice a year, or that's once every two years. I can tell you, we have um, the. We first we do our, our we have really good partnerships um, with Amity in particular the police department um, and they regularly do tours of our building. Um, I can tell you it's already been done this year. You know so yeah, but this um, the high school is, is that that's the state that is state. I don't that's know correct. if that's happening. Is that happening there too? Yes. Oh, okay. So it's a, so is is biennially requirement is the biennial requirement is that once twice a year or is it once every two years? I think it's every the way that biannually, I would say once every two years. Well, it's biannually with an E. I think that, I, I, I just want to be sure that, you Makes know, sense. I, yeah. we, I'm going to look up biannually in the dictionary. It's a good idea. <laughs> we got to do that. Make sure we're right. District security officer who also serves as school safety and security coordinator. Yep. Years. And that, that okay. covers so it, biennial is means at least again it has to get done at least once every two years. So that's fine. Wonderful. Yeah, I mean, I, we're already doing better than that. But yep. I just wanted to know what the requirement was. Mm -hmm. Do we want to make a changes to this? Are yeah. we making changes yeah. here? Uh, number one. It should say contracted security guards, not school security guards. Right. Because we contract with M&G Security. Mm -hmm. Okay. School resource officers, is that correct? Uh, no, they don't. Just check the bottom one. Check the contracted security guard. That's how we. That's do all we have to SROs do. Are different. Check things. it. Yeah, okay. Check all right. The and then the get, the, one. get rid of these. What's that? We getting rid of these? Oh yeah, you can do it that way. That's fine. The way you did cross the, the other ones just cross off. Are we here? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Let's make a note here. Okay. What's you got a, something scribbled yeah, here? I crossed off this one. Number three. Yeah. Coordinate a tour. Okay. We're just gonna get rid of that. Yeah, I would. I, I'd get rid of that one. Because our, our Greg is not doing anti-bullying programs. That's not his skill set. He, he's a police officer. You know, yeah. Yeah. Like that's All not right. principals and guides counselors do this. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we want to go to the board directs the school safety and security coordinator. We need to change that name again. Yes, we do. On, on page two. Uh, page one and district security officer. Change that title. Oh no, it's because no, we're okay with that because he also serves as the school safety and security. You're fine on that. So okay. But we want to say include the following information in annual reports. Yeah. Okay. The next part, if you look, at, if you turn the page to page two, uh -huh. there's a bunch of check boxes there, and you can decide what you want. Um, at the end of the year, once per year, Greg's going to come to have to report to you um, to the board and. What you I wanted. remember we had last year. last year. I did it for us last yeah, year. Yeah, and that's mm -hmm. fine. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like looking through and kind of, it seemed like, I think that I felt like everything here, um, yeah, everything that's here, we got a little bit of a breakdown on when you did yours. Mm -hmm. um, I can't see anything that should specifically be left out, but. Um, Oh, I guess number four, we didn't have a lot of information on that last year. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know how easy that is to prevent, to provide. School climate can be a little more hit and miss than, you know, we're still improving on collecting because every time you survey kids, you're taking them out of class, right. which you have to. And, um, but we will have information that we're going to be getting from the state, from the PACE survey this year, mm -hmm. which would be some some of that information, right? Yep, correct. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing on here that I don't remember being in our last one. You know what I mean? 
but I don't see any reason any of it shouldn't be there, unless you can think of a reason to leave it out. I, I see no reason. Mm -hmm. And we have no flexibility because it's the board. If the board wants to see something in sure. addition, or we're less if they miss something, we can always say, hey, do you have this also? Sure. We had to Greg. I think so. Yeah. So we want to check all of them? Yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Under guidelines. Uh, the last paragraph, we don't have weapons in our building. Yes. So that needs to be crossed out, the last paragraph. School security personnel shall that's carry if, weapons. That's if a uh, school resource officer carries a weapon mm -hmm. or if teachers carry weapons, I guess, right? Mm-hmm. There are districts that do different things with that, but yeah, currently yeah. that's not in our, in our setup. Do we want to get rid of the, the school security? Yeah, we'll show. get rid of that paragraph. This, well, this paragraph, our the, school security. The four points, too? Um, I would get no, rid just of that, get, that, just that, that paragraph. Okay, all right, I did that. All right. Above that, guidelines, are we? Uh, guidelines, I put a check where it says contract for security guards. Check that. Yeah. What about employee and school police officers? All right, the whole school police officer has to be called. That's a specific title. Yeah. by PDE and school resources is specific like there's certain it's bureaucratic stuff but the to have know, those titles we 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 don't have those titles. I used to use that word like mm -hmm. just kind of interchangeably and I was told that yeah it, it actually has a yeah. defined meaning and you know I didn't know so I, I, I would cross out all of this under school police officer. Ours look different so this where school safety support services where you where it says where you it's over here oh she took that out already okay she took part of that out so the security guard shall provide the following services yeah i i at least i did this like two weeks ago at least so i forgot she i right. had to take some of that out already right, so i knew so we don't didn't have s in mind is the is the wall thing because i knew we didn't have sro okay so, so that we have the only other thing we have to go over is coordination with law enforcement okay yep let's go Officers. coordination with law enforcement including school police officers. Again, are we changing? Is that, is that, it should say is that including, contracted? Including district security officers. You want to add that coordination with law enforcement. It's Greg, not contracted security guards? Like no, Greg here? does that. Greg, Greg is coordinating with law enforcement. So again, what are we doing? Now get rid of this. Get rid of those two, five, under five, that we're coordination of law enforcement officials. Do you see where it says that? Right here? Okay, yep. Do what? And you, you're going to, and including district security officer. Up here? So, yeah, just write that in there, including districts. Di that's Greg's title, is district security officer. Yeah. Instead of SRO and school police officer. Okay, including s district security officer. Yep. Okay. No, I and I'll reread that too. Like I, 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 I crossed that out by accident. Should I have left that in there? Including what was it? Including district security officers. Right. So these these three. We, get, we don't check those. We just don't. Yeah. Okay. All right. We go to first reading on this then. Okay. Yeah. If you guys are good, first reading. Yeah. Sorry, there's a lot of changes to that one. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Got to make sure it gets it up to date. Make, make it match what we got. Right. So, I don't know if I do. I have this next part. So next, we're talking about retirement of the following policies. You said that they were uh, yeah policies that are combined. These are policies that are combined. Um, we got to put this on the board agenda to abolish the policies. That basically we've in during the last about oh. year we it's cleaning up old policies that we've written other policies to take the place of them, updated with code, yeah. and then the numbers may change um, in regards to that. So, like, uh, all of these, like, district policy uh, 408. Um, 413. 413, and looks like 424. Uh, are, we able to put it on the, are we able to put it on the agenda to say to replace, you know how, like, um, to, to say, you know, abolish 
policy number whatever, and then in parentheses, um, you know, su supplanted or superseded by policy so number whatever. Sure you know, you know what I mean? I have what I have right there for you, and if if I, I'll make a copy of that if you want. That's yeah. my kind of my cliff notes. Just because it makes yeah. it a lot easier than going through each one by one yeah. with people. Like Does something like that makes sense right there. That's kind of my notes. Yes. And the rationale. Yep. Yeah. Otherwise, what happens, we end up with old policies that are actually, and it makes it actually confusing sometimes because they contradict what the updated policy is. Yeah, so like 408, um, the issues are being addressed by policy 311. Exactly. Number, number 413, you know, addresses something we don't do. Yes. And 424 is being, is, um, is issued, issues in 424 are addressed in, and 515 are addressed in, 336, 339, right? Yeah, this is housekeeping stuff. Yeah, and um, just just so mm -hmm. it's easy for yeah. the members that aren't on that on this committee. That makes see. a lot of sense. And we'll yeah. put that if I put that in there with it, so mm -hmm. that people can read that ahead of time if they are interested. There's nothing real controversial. Yeah, right I agree. Right. Yeah. So we want to make this what. We don't have to do a first reading on this. No, I think, retire, I think we don't retire stuff very often. No, we don't. Yeah. And we're, we're starting. We're doing house cleaning now. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, the they can do. They can just vote. We can put that on the cow and then vote. I, okay, so I should just process. write that. Put on yeah. the cow. Yep. Yeah. For vote and the next voting meeting. I figured it's a good thing to do because we have new board members coming on, like just to clean that up a little bit. So, some of the old stuff. Is that the last thing? I think. Is that it? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Hold on. that's it. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, so, what is the. Except, except for new. So, I know that if there are new policies coming in, you know, obviously we look at them when we get them from whatever source we get them from, and a lot of them come through PASMA. Um, um, but as far as ones that are being revised, mm -hmm. um, how, what's the, what's the um, desired time frame for updating old policies? What, what do we like to see? Within the district, yeah. Do we, what like, do we like to see that we touch them, or at least look at them, make sure they're okay every five years, every three years? Yeah, and what we try to do is right now we we this has actually been a long process. We've been working through um, our entire policy, but it wasn't Correct. looked at for years and years and years. And I know. So, yeah. And so we've embarked where we're reviewing all of our policies, and then what we do is we just will cycle back. What I try to do is yeah. I try to get about. Seven policies I review about seven to ten, depending on the length of the policies, about seven uh -huh. to ten in each um, policy. Maybe a little less sometimes, maybe a little bit more. We're just reviewing and touching base on some of them. Um, so really it, somewhere in that range per meeting is what we try to do. Do we still have any that haven't been touched in more than like five to eight years? We're working on it. We're finishing up right oh, now the entire, but we are literally, oh, we're right. just about okay. done with the I entire just, I didn't have a good sense for how, I know this has been a multi-year process yep. and I just didn't have a good feeling for how we were doing it. Yeah. So, okay. we're, we're doing really really good on some things okay. and uh, our our next step is um, one of the things we have to do and we, we can talk about this offline but we're, we want to start working on updating our admin regs yes. um, which are and some of them have been updated like when I need when, to when, when, it, when to it really needed to happen but I, we, we, I need to go back what I'm going to do is um, start cycling them through in a longer project you know in terms of trying to you know, clean them up so they're all up to date. Like, yeah, I was just, I was just curious. Yeah, no, we're doing really good. Right, we've come a long way. So yeah, yeah it's more. It used to be like if I, as a parent, yeah. would go in and look, I would see like a um, a PDF created from an old Xerox, or you know, that that was sometimes looks like. You know, it was like 1986, revised 1998, <laughs> you know, and like that's not the way it is anymore, yeah. you know, most of them are at least 2000 something. But, uh, we're we're <laughs> so, getting there. And yeah. some, as you know, like in the, and I try to catch these for us, like when regs change and right, it's, a, that's different. it's a key, it's a key one, like the, 
uh, I'll use an example like um, like Title One. They'll and they'll ding you on the audit if your policy isn't up. That we try to catch them you know, before they. And uh, I know you know. that some of the different associations try to keep us abreast of those. Yes, they do. That, that you know, like give us those samples. They're very good about it and trying to help us with yeah. that kind of stuff. I was just curious. No, it's a great question. Good. All right, that concludes our policy review committee meeting on October 28th.